Hey everyone, Andrew Marston for the Euchre Media YouTube channel here, and today in After Effects we're going to be making an expression rig that displays a random color from a specified color palette at an interval that you control. First we'll make a color selector rig using an array and math.floor. Then we'll improve that rig into our final random color generator using the seed random and random expressions. Then we'll add some flexibility to the code using a for loop. And last, we'll briefly go over how the dots that chase each other around the frame in the intro was made. Also, I want to point out that we won't actually be covering how to create the examples seen here beyond generating the random colors, but they are included in the free project file which you can download via the link in the description. And I want to make sure to give credit where credit is due, and the idea for this tutorial actually came from another video from the Motion by Nick channel, and if you haven't subscribed to Nick's YouTube channel, definitely go do that right now. Don't even think about it, you won't regret it. Great After Effects and motion design tutorials. But in his five mind-blowing expressions in After Effects video, he shows another similar expression to what we're going to be writing that generates random colors. And after looking at this code, I wanted to dig a little deeper to figure out how it works, and also see if there's any ways that it could be improved. So here we are in After Effects, and the first thing we're going to do is make a color selector rig, which we will improve in the next step into our random color generator rig. And hopefully by taking this step-by-step -step approach, you get a little better understanding of what each piece of this puzzle does. So let me go over the setup I have already in place. We have a black square on a shape layer, and then we also have a control layer that has one, four, four, one, two, three, four, color control effects, and uh, a slider that I've renamed to color selector. So the goal of this step is to be able to color this black square to any of these four colors in our palette using this slider. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually lock our effect control panel so that it's easier to pick whip to. And selecting that shape layer with the black square, I'm gonna hit control or command F and type in color, which will display all the color properties for that layer. And then I'm gonna pick whip the fill color to any of these color controls. We'll use the first one. Great, so now we're getting somewhere. The shape has become the color that we link to, and if we toggle into the expressions for that color property, we can see the uh, line of code that makes that happen. So I'm gonna hit home, and I'm gonna make this line of code into a variable. I'm gonna call it color one equals, and then the semicolon. And now I'm gonna feed all the other three colors into this expression as variables also. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command D, one, two, three times, is it three? Yep, three times, so now we have four lines of identical code, and then I'm gonna rename sequentially all these variables and all the effect names to match what's in our control layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward while I do that. Perfect, so now we have all of the colors from our palette loaded as variables in our expression. And to just demonstrate a little more clearly what is going on, if I was to type one of these variables and hit semicolon and enter, now that the color linked to that variable, in this case color three, which is our green color, will display as the color of our shape. So now we just need to find a way to make this slider choose one of these variables. Uh, and we're gonna do that by declaring a new variable called, I'm gonna call it colors equals, and we're going to put all of our variables in an array. So open square brackets because square brackets are where arrays live, and then I'm going to go ahead and type out all of our variables into this array. And this is valuable because each of our variables, which are linked to our colors, now have their own index number within the array. So array counting starts at zero, so color one, our cyan color, is going to be zero, and then two, three, four will be one, two, three. So zero, one, two, three, because this is an array. So just to demonstrate a little more clearly, I'm going to type in colors, which is our, our variable with that array, open square bracket, and then I'll type three, for example, which should display the color that is linked to our variable color four. So I'm gonna hit semicolon, enter on the numpad, and sure enough, it displays this magenta color, which is the fourth color in our palette, or number three in our array. So now we just need to find a way to tie in our slider to select which piece of our array to use in our final output. We can do that pretty simply by declaring a new variable. I will call it slider, go figure, and I'm gonna pick whip to our color slider, and I'm gonna type dot value at the end, semicolon, and then instead of this hard-coded number in our final output, I'm going to type our slider variable. So if I hit enter on the number pad, sure enough, because our color selector slider is set to zero and cyan is actually linked to the variable that is the index number zero of our array, we're displaying the cyan color. Great, so this looks like it's working, and for the most part it is, but we do have a problem. If you were to put a non-integer 
like 1.5 into the value of the color selector slider, then the expression breaks. This is because in the array, there is no item with index number 1.5. We just have 0, 1, 2, and 3. So to solve this problem, we're going to force After Effects to round whatever the value of this slider is down to the nearest integer. And we can do that by typing math.floor, open parentheses, and then at the end, close parentheses. Click away, and sure enough, it has rounded 1.5 down to 1, so we're using index, whatever is at index 1 in our array, which is color 2, and color 2 is blue, and so we have created our color selector rig. All right, so this is all good and well, but it is not why you clicked on this video. So let's turn our color selector rig into a random color generator rig. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rename our color selector slider to frequency, and this will represent in seconds how long After Effects waits before displaying a new color from our palette. And in our expression, you'll see that After Effects has renamed automatically the effect name, so we don't have to worry about that. But one thing we do wanna do is delete this math.floor bit. And then on a new line, I'm gonna declare a new variable. I'm calling it counter and equals math.floor, floor, open parentheses, time, so the current time of the playhead, divided by sliders, so now the value of our frequency variable. And I'm gonna copy these two lines of code. So what this does is actually creates a counter that increases by one every time this interval of time is reached. And that's a little bit confusing, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new text layer. And I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna solo that layer. And in the source text, I'm gonna alt click on the stopwatch and paste those two lines of code. We don't need that counter variable. And let me make this a little bigger. So now we can see what's going on. Every time we hit 1.5 seconds, this number will increase by one. So we're now at zero, but as soon as we get to 1.5, now it increases to one. And when we get to three seconds, it increases to two. So this is valuable to us in our next step when we add the random aspect to our rig. So let me do that right now. The first thing we're gonna do is type seed random. And now seed random has two arguments. The first one is a number, and in this case, we're gonna put our counter number because we know that it changes every 1.5 seconds or whatever time interval is declared in our frequency. And then the second argument of seed random is true or false. Is it timeless or does it change every frame? And we, want, we don't want this to change every frame, so we're gonna type comma true. So now on a new line, we're gonna declare one last variable. I'm calling it color ID equals math.floor, open parentheses, random, open parentheses, colors, which is our array of colors that has four pieces, colors.length. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon, and I'll explain this in just a second, but I wanna put everything together. So instead of slider being the piece of our colors array that we want to display, we want to put our color ID being what selects which piece of our array gets displayed. And if I click away, now sure enough, every 1.5 seconds or whatever value we have in here, I'm actually going to put 0.5 so we can see this a little quicker. If I play this every 0.5 seconds, a new color from our palette is displayed. So let's backtrack just a second and go over how this random part of the expression that I just wrote works. So random by default will automatically generate a number between zero and whatever is in between the parentheses. And in this case, we said the length of our colors array, which is four. So it'll generate a number between zero and four, but that number won't necessarily be an integer. And that's why we use math.floor to round it down to an integer. So now it will output zero, one, two or three. There is a very slim chance that it'll output four exactly, and I'm willing to take that chance. So now our color ID variable will output zero, one, two, or three, and by putting that into our colors array as our final output, then we will automatically display one of our four colors from our palette. So we have now created the rig that we initially set out to make. It displays a random color from our palette at an interval of time that we decide, but, it's a little inflexible. So for example, what if we wanted to have eight colors in our palette or two colors in our palette? Well, we would have to go in and manually add or remove variables for each of those colors and then type them into our array. And there is a way to make After Effects automatically do this for us, which I'm gonna show you right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on our control layer, I'm gonna add a new slider and I'm gonna call it 
num colors for number of colors, how many colors are in our palette. And in this case, I'm gonna put eight. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this color control effect. So we have eight of them, and then I'm gonna make them each a unique color. And I'm gonna fast forward so you don't have to watch me do it in real time. And now with eight color controls, each with unique colors, I'm gonna go back into our expression. So I'm gonna select our shape layer that has the expression. I'm gonna hit EE, that brings up all the expressions on a layer. And I'm gonna go in and actually delete all those variables that link to the color sliders, to the color, uh, color control effects. And even this array that we so carefully typed all of our variables into, I'm just gonna delete that. And instead I'm gonna type new array open close parentheses and what this does is in the mind of after effects it just creates an empty new array linked to this colors variable and then on a new line i'm going to create a variable called num colors and link that using the pick whip to our num colors slider so now we just need to write a few lines of code that makes after effects automatically push the color property values of each of our eight color control effects that make up our palette into that new blank array. And we can do that pretty easily with a for loop. So I type four, what number does this loop start counting on? I equals, I'm gonna say start at number one, semicolon, not comma. I almost always put comma and then it throws me an error in the for loop parentheses, you divide your arguments with a semicolon. So the next argument is our condition for continuation. So if, if i is less than or equal to our num colors variable, semicolon, well then we'll, what do we do? i plus plus, or we add one to i and then we rerun the loop. So with this in place, I'm gonna type curly brackets and here is where we tell After Effects what to do each time it runs the loop. I'm gonna declare a new variable calling it new color equals, and I'm gonna pick whip to one of these color properties of our color control effects on our control layer. And instead of referencing the color name, the, the effect name color control one, I'm gonna delete that number, but leave everything else, including the space, that's important. And outside the parentheses, I'm gonna say plus I. So now every time this loop runs, it's gonna assign to this new color variable, the color property of color control of the effect name that is color control whatever number we're on and we're starting at one. So the first time it runs, it'll find this cyan color. Now we just need to add this new color variable value to our array. So we do that by referencing that array colors dot push open parentheses. What are we gonna add to that array? We're gonna add our new color variable that's just above it. So I'm gonna click away. And if I hit zero on my numpad to, to play this back, now After Effects is showing a random color between the eight, the first eight uh, color control effects of our palette. And I just wanna show you that if I were to put another number in here like two, now it'll only display a random color between our first two color control effects, so either green or cyan. Great, so that wraps it up, but in the next section, I'm gonna show you how I made this graphic that we saw in the intro. So this will be more of an overview rather than a step-by-step, -step, but feel free to download the project file and dig in as deep as you want. So basically what we have here are a bunch of shape layers, a bunch of squares in shape layers, all positioned around the frame. And I say squares because they truly are squares made with the rectangle tool. And then I just cranked the position, the roundness up until they looked like circles. And I frequently do this when I'm making circles in After Effects for potential future flexibility in animation. If I wanna morph that circle into a square, then I just have to animate the roundness property. Whereas if I made the circle with the ellipse tool, for example, then I'm kinda of locked into a circle. So anyway, we have all these shape layers and I'm gonna hide them and solo the one that matters. So the value, the value of the fill effect that's on this shape layer is what's going to chase itself around the frame. And I just applied the expression we wrote in the last step to the color property of a, of a fill effect on this layer with one difference. Basically, instead of the frequency, the frequency variable only referencing the slider, the frequency slider, which would give us a value in seconds, I multiplied that, that slider value by this comp dot frame duration. So the, the duration in seconds of one frame of our composition times the value of that slider will give you the number of frames not seconds, until the color changes. So now that frequency slider will tell you how many frames until the color changes. And then for the rest of these, uh, how do I get that? Yeah, unsolo. For the rest of these, they all just reference the color of that fill effect 
on a frame delay. So on the control layer, I have one more slider called frame delay set to one, so one frame delay. And then you'll notice that the, the name of each layer, it is just rectangle hyphen a number. And I do that because this number will determine how many frames to wait to source that color. And I'll show you, that's confusing. I'm not explaining it well. Let me show you exactly what's going on. Under the expression of the fill effect of rectangle 12, I have this setup. So I have an ID variable that uses name.split that takes the second part of the layer name, so the number. So now ID equals 12. And then I also reference the color property of that fill effect of our leading dot. And then I have a frame delay variable that says, that just references the frame delay slider I showed you, which is value one, but we could change that. And then we have a D variable, D for delay, that's what I usually use. And I say frame, this comp dot frame duration times the frame delay times the ID. So when you multiply these all together, you're going to get a delay that is 12 frames long. And so for layer 16, it'll be 16 frames long. And in this way, you can kind of chase that value, that color value around the frame. So I put it all together by referencing the, the source variable, which is the color of our leading dot, dot value at time, open parentheses, time minus our delay. And that is essentially how we make these dots chase each other around, is that they're just on a delay based on the number at the end of the frame. All right, so I hope you got it. I know it might have been a little confusing at times. If you have a question, feel free to leave it in the comments. And I would also love to know how you think that I could improve as a tutorial creator to make videos that are more helpful to you. So, and don't hold back, I can take it. Uh, feel free to leave those in the comments and thank you very much in advance. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good day.